mutton barra kebab is a very typical recipe of the north and today let's see how to make a quick and an easy version of it here i have a kg of mutton chops which we are going to marinate with 1 cup of hung curd a tablespoon of garlic paste a tablespoon of ginger paste a teaspoon of anar dana powder which is basically dry pomegranate powder this will add a little tanginess to the chops half a teaspoon of pepper powder quarter teaspoon of cinnamon powder a pinch of nutmeg powder half a teaspoon of green cardamom powder a teaspoon of garam masala powder a teaspoon of coriander seed powder half a teaspoon of turmeric powder a tablespoon of red chili powder here i have some roasted gram flour so i'm going to take a tablespoon of roasted gram flour as well salt to taste and about 2 tablespoons of mustard oil let's mix this well and marinate the meat for at least 8 hours here i've already marinated a kilo of mutton chops almost 8 hours earlier we'll use this now for the recipe so what i'm going to show you now is an easy way to cook this mutton bara kebab on a tawa so i'm going to heat around 2 tablespoons of oil a tablespoon of butter and now we are going to just cook these marinated pieces of mutton in this oil and butter let's cover this and cook it on a low flame for 10 to 15 minutes Let's flip these kebabs now. Let's cover this and cook this for another 10 minutes. After 10 minutes of cooking it on the other side, I'm sure the chops are ready to be served. The meat is easily falling off the bone. The mutton bara kebabs are ready to be served. Let's remove this in a serving platter. Let's sprinkle some chaat masala on this. And our mutton bara kebab is ready to be served. You saw what a simple recipe this is. which can be easily made on your tawa so do try this recipe and keep watching get curry hi guys i recently went to a hyderabad wedding and there i was served fried chicken and i instantly fell in love with that so i decided to share the recipe with you guys so let's start cooking For Hyderabadi wedding fried chicken, first we we'll start with the marination. I'm going to add first garam masala, ginger garlic paste, at least two tablespoon. Next, black pepper powder, tandoori masala, chaat masala, red chili powder, some salt, one and a half tablespoon of basin, two teaspoon of lemon, green chili sauce. red chili sauce tomato ketchup one egg white for binding and last little bit of baking soda now mix it up nicely 
I let the chicken rest for at least 30 minutes. By that time, we'll make the dry coating. For the coating, first, I'm going to take all-purpose flour, that is maida, one fourth cup corn flour, and salt. Now mix it up nicely. My chicken rested for half an hour, and the coating is also ready. Let's start coating the chicken one by one. Dust the piece nicely. Dust the excess flour and put it in the plate. I'm going to follow the same procedure for the rest. I'm going to let the chicken rest in the coating for two minutes. By that time, let's prepare quick chutney. For that, I'm going to first heat up the pan, add oil. Once the oil starts heating up, I'm going to add cumin, few pieces of cloves, two to three pieces of cardamom, one cinnamon stick, two dry red chilies, one tablespoon ginger garlic paste, diced onion. Saute them for few minutes. As the onion starting to get little translucent, now I'm going to add diced tomato. Picador chili, little coriander, and mint leaves. Mix them up nicely. As the tomato starts getting cooked, now I'm going to add little red chili powder, garam masala, teaspoon of turmeric powder, little bit of kasuri methi, salt. And last, black pepper. Saute it till the rawness of the masala goes away. My chutney masala is ready. I'm gonna let it cool for a while. By that time, I'm gonna heat up the oil, which I'm gonna use for frying the chicken. I'm gonna transfer it into a mixing jar. With this, I'm gonna add little water and blend it into a fine paste. My chutney is ready. You can see the consistency. The oil is heated up and the chicken is rested well. Now we start frying it. Make sure you cook it on a medium low flame so that the chicken gets nicely cooked and it doesn't burn. And transfer it into a plate. There you go guys, our Hyderabadi fried chicken is ready. Today let's see how to make a pulao with absolutely minimalistic ingredients. It's called the Afghani pulao. For that, I'm going to heat half a cup of sesame seed oil. Once the oil is hot, I'm going to add three onions that I have sliced and I'm going to saute it for four to five minutes. The onions have softened up a little bit. Let's add 600 grams of mutton to this. You can add chicken as well, but uh, mutton tastes much better. Here I have made a spice mix by simply roasting and grinding eight black cardamoms, five green cardamoms, and a tablespoon of cumin seeds. I roasted this 
cooled it and ground it to a nice fine powder. I'm going to add a tablespoon of this spice powder to the meat and I'm going to sear this for three to four minutes. Ginger and garlic is not used in Afghani pulao but if you want to use it's an option you can definitely add a tablespoon of each and just saute it till the raw fragrance goes off. The color of the meat has changed. Time to add half a liter of water to this. Some salt. Let's give it a good stir and cover this and cook till the meat is 80% done. While the mutton is getting cooked, I'm going to heat quarter cup of sesame oil in another vessel. The oil is hot. I'm going to add in quarter cup of raisins and just saute it for a few seconds. And then I'm going to add three carrots that I have julienned. And we're going to saute this for three to four minutes. Add a teaspoon of sugar to this to add a little sweetness to the carrots. Let's shut the flame and add these carrots and raisins to the mutton. Here I have three cups of basmati rice that I had soaked for 15 to 20 minutes and drained. Now I'm going to add this to the meat. Add another tablespoon of the spice mix that we had prepared. While cooking the meat, we've already added salt. So I'm going to add enough just for the rice. I'm going to add three cups of water to this. Just gently mix this. And cover and cook till the rice is done on a medium flame. We covered this pulao and cooked it on a medium to low flame for almost 20 minutes. The rice and the meat is done. Let's remove it in a serving bowl. You saw what an easy recipe this was. So please try it. I've shown you a lot of tikkas and kebabs in the past. Today is yet another one, but this one is my absolute all-time favorite because it's made in a jiffy and it uses all protein. Let's begin with Kacche Kheme Ke Kebab. Now talking about Kacche Kheme Ke Kebab, what does this mean? What is Kacha Kheema? Kacha Kheema basically is raw meat which is pounded or minced. Now this is hand cut. What I do is whenever I'm using raw meat, or goat meat. I prefer using hand meat or hand cut meat when I am making something like a keema or a kacche gosh ka kebab like we are seeing today. In case you are doing something like a shami kebab then always use a boti. In case you are doing say galotti then you can also use uh, a mince which is machine made. So you know with every kebab it becomes distinct, it becomes peculiar and it also becomes the signature of that particular kebab and that particular cuisine on the larger space. Now kacha keema, now of course uh, quite a difficult word or quite a different word, but why kacha keema? Because this is a very quick recipe. This is not like a shami kebab where you have to cook it for like half an hour, 45 minutes, ensure that the meat gets cooked perfectly well and then you shred it into its fibers. This is kacha keema, raw meat. You just add in ingredients and that's where you are. Now this is kacha papita or raw papaya. Now this is going to be used as a tenderizer. Now this is still easier to source. This is still easier to kind of get in the market. In case you are a little adventurous, you can also look for kachari or kachari powder, which also works as a wonderful tenderizer. Um, not a very usual ingredient in uh, a pantry, but if you are the adventurous kind, you will look for it. Add half a teaspoon while kind of mashing the entire uh, meat and you get a must wonderful tender kebab. Let's move on to making a paste of ginger, garlic, green chilies and papaya with its skin on. Let's begin with ginger. The skin of course is scraped, the ginger is washed, garlic without its skin. 
The next is the addition of green chilies. I'm using chilies of two varieties, the spicier one and the non-spicy one. The non-spicy one, of course, has more flavor and the spicy one, of course, has the pungency and the heat. The next ingredient is a tenderizer and that is, like I said, raw papaya. But it's important to remove the pith and the seeds because they're bitter in nature. Let's slice this roughly. Let's add the papaya also in this, which is sliced and I'm reminding with its skin on. And let's run this into a smooth, fine paste. With this, our paste is done and ready. Let's transfer this straight into the raw meat. Ensure that you scrape it to the last bit. Let's add in some more ingredients, beginning with chopped red onions. Let's transfer the onions as well, along with this, finely chopped mint leaves, finely chopped coriander leaves. Well, in case you're washing the leaves and using them directly, ensure that you pat dry the mint leaves as well as the coriander leaves, because in this, you do not want any water. Please remember this. Like I said, it's kache kime ke kebab. It does not use any cornstarch, no gram flour, no potatoes, no breadcrumbs in any form. So no soaked bread in water or in milk or no breadcrumbs. Remember this. We're not coating it in panko, we're not rolling it in vermicelli, not coating it in rava or semolina. It's just kache ki meke kebab. Remember this. Very interesting. Let's add in a few spices. Beginning with garam masala powder. This is of course home ground garam masala. To this, I'm adding in a touch of red chilli powder. Now this is, again, depending on how much spice you or your family are okay with because there's already green chilli in the recipe. But because it's a raw meat kebab or a kache kime ka kebab, it's going to be a little mellow because it's, of course, it's all protein. Remember this. You do not want it to get colored or anything like that. Just natural flavor of meat. Turmeric powder. Again, just a touch of it, not too much. Coriander. Now, this is again a very interesting ingredient, especially in this kebab, because it gives you that bite. This is unroasted coriander seed. Very simple. You just take it, crush it, blitz it in a blender, and that's where you are. A teaspoonful, maybe a little more, because this is going to be nice and pronounced. And finally, last but not the least, salt as required. Now, because this is an all-protein kebab or a kache kime ka kebab, the salt needs to be slightly lesser because when you fry it, everything is going to get dehydrated or evaporate. And that's where the salt kind of gets us slightly more accentuated. Remember this. Let's mix all of this together. While I'm mixing this, I'm also ensuring that the pan is lit here. It has to be nice and hot with, of course, vegetable oil. Now, ideally, these kebabs are deep fried, but I choose the method of shallow frying because the question that looms on your head is, what do you do with all the remaining fried oil? Shallow frying is the trick. The keema mixture is done and ready. Once the color of the meat changes, well, initially it's nice and bright pink, but as we keep mixing it, it starts getting a tint of green and it also gets the color from the spices. That's why you know this is done and ready. Do not wait for anything on the planet. Do not keep this in the refrigerator or anything for that matter. Do not even keep this aside for 10 minutes because everything else in the kebab mixture will start leaching water or moisture and then it'll become very difficult to make the kebabs. Let's make these little cutlets and straight drop them in oil. Now once you place the 10th kebab, now this is like a thumb roll. Once you place the 10th kebab in oil, you flip the first one. Now I have actually reached 11 because the pan allowed so. So there you go. In the same sequence that you placed it, is how you'll keep flipping it. Now this is a basic thumb rule while frying anything, whether it's a cutlet or a tikki or a kebab, just absolutely anything. Well, this is how you get absolute even brownness or caramelization on anything. The 
The kebabs are well fried on both the sides. Let's remove these and transfer these on an absorbent tissue paper. Well, if you notice from the original shape, like a cutlet almost, it shrinks and that is a sign of the kebab turning out well. Because the proteins have now cooked in the kebab, the steam which has passed through and through, and there are no chances of it remaining raw. Similarly, let's start frying the rest of the kebabs. Our kebabs are all fried and ready. Time to serve this and plate this. With this, our kacche kime ke kebabs are done and ready. While I have served this with mint leaves, some sliced onions and lemons, you can serve this with some additional pao, with some more chutneys and go all out and impress your family. On that note, stay tuned for more such quick, simple, easy recipes. Bye for now. Today I'm going to show you a recipe of a biryani which is absolutely delicious to taste and also unique to look at and it's called the Parda Biryani. This is a perfect do-it-yourself recipe and I also have a do-it-yourself kitchen hack which helped me in the lockdown which I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. Let's begin with the recipe by marinating the meat. I'm using chicken over here. You can use mutton as well, but the cooking time will differ. So to one kg of chicken, I'm going to add two tablespoons of ginger paste, two tablespoons of garlic paste, 15 green chilies slit, a teaspoon of turmeric powder, two tablespoons of red chili powder, a teaspoon and a half of garam masala powder, salt to taste. I'm going to add dried plums here, which is also known as alu bukhara, about six of them, two tablespoons of freshly chopped coriander, and one and a half cup of yogurt. Let's mix this well. Let's keep this marinated meat aside at least for half an hour. I usually prefer to marinate my meats for a longer time, but half an hour is good enough. I'm going to heat two tablespoons of ghee and two tablespoons of oil. The ghee and the oil has got hot. Let's add the whole spices. Two bay leaves, two inches of cinnamon, two black cardamoms, five green cardamoms, two star anise and six to seven cloves. Let's wait for them to release their aroma. Now let's add five onions that I have sliced and we have to fry them till they're nice and golden in color. The onions have browned beautifully. Now let's add the marinated meat. Let's mix this well. I'm not going to add water to this because the curd anyway releases a lot of water and the chicken will cook in its juices as well. So I'm just going to simply cover this and cook it on a low flame for at least 15 to 20 minutes. To make the biryani look absolutely unique, we're going to steam it in a parda. So this parda is basically a roti which we are going to make with maida, salt and water. We are going to knead a dough. We are going to roll it into a chapati and we are going to place the biryani in it, fold it and steam it in that so that all the flavours get trapped into it. So here I have three cups of maida or flour. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt to this. Mix this well. And I'm going to add 
water to this and make a nice stiff dough. I'm just going to drizzle a teaspoon of oil on the dough and I'm going to knead it for another two to three minutes and the dough will be ready. As you can see, the dough is not sticking to the sides of the bowl. It's ready. So let's cover this with a wet cloth and keep it aside till the chicken is done. The meat is off the bone, the chicken is ready. Let's switch off the flame and roll the chapati. Let's sprinkle some flour on a countertop. And now let's roll this into a nice big chapati. So our parda is ready. Let's just fold this into half. Fold it into a quarter. I'm going to take a pan here and place this roti in the pan. Our parda is ready. Now let's just place it properly into the pan. I'm going to sprinkle some fried onions first, some finely chopped coriander, some finely chopped mint. We're going to add rice. Here I have taken 700 grams for a kilo of chicken and I basically boiled it uh, till it was 80% done. And now we're going to add this rice. To give the rice a nice gloss, a sheen, we're going to drizzle a teaspoon of oil. Let's sprinkle some saffron water. Some kevra gel. And now some of the chicken. Similarly, we create another layer. Now we're going to seal this. Just going to take a little water and stick it otherwise. We're going to put this on a dumb on a medium to a low flame for 10 minutes. I'm taking a pan that is fitting exactly on this spot. And now we're going to flip the biryani. Let's flip it and place it for another five minutes. Isn't this gorgeous? After we flipped the biryani, we kept it to cook for five minutes. I'm going to shut the flame. And now let's open up the parda. And the parda biryani is ready. You saw what an easy recipe it is. And it is even easier now to keep your kitchen free from cockroaches with the Godrej Hit Anti-Road Gel. Do try this recipe. You know what? Over the years, I've made a terrible mistake. You may be wondering what. Over so many years, I've shown you so many varieties of biryanis. But what just genuinely escaped my mind is, I've never shown you any raitas or accompanying raitas to begin with. Well, today I'm going to rectify all of that and show you at least five varieties. Let's begin. The first one, of course, is mixed vegetable raita, the quintessential raita which is served with almost all biryanis, the hero of raitas. Very simple. The first, of course, is red onions going into the bowl of whipped curd, followed by chopped cucumber, chopped tomatoes, chilies as per choice and to this I'm going to add in some spices a touch of red chilli powder a touch of cumin roasted and powdered black salt and regular table salt 
Let's mix all this well. The first raita is mixed and ready. Let's transfer this in the serving bowl. And now I'm going to top this with some vegetables so that eventually they look distinct because I'm showing you five different kinds of raitas. Eventually they should all look different. You'd be wondering why are raitas getting garnished, but this is purely to make them look different and unique. Let's top this up with some tomatoes, some cucumber, some green chilies again, and finally red chili powder. Let's move on to the next raita and that is burhani raita. Let's do that. To whipped curd, I'm adding in fried onions and I'm adding in crushed garlic. You can also by all means add fried garlic and that also tastes wonderfully well. Now this is generally a orangish pink colored raita. So I'm adding in a little more of the chili powder, a touch of salt, black salt, and finally roasted cumin powder. Let's mix all this well. With this, your burhani raita is done and ready. And you know the interesting part about this raita is, it actually feels like eating the marination of the meat or the chicken while actually making the biryani. Because what goes in here? Garlic, fried onions, curd, salt, chili, cumin seeds, powdered, and finally black salt. Isn't that interesting? That makes it wonderful actually. Let's transfer a burhani raita also in a bowl. Let's garnish this with some fried onions and along with this, red chilli powder. Well, garnishes are generally the ingredients from the recipe itself. So do not look at an external garnish or something which is not in the recipe. Don't add in a sprig of rosemary or thyme or curry leaf just for effect because that's not part of the recipe. Our vegetable raita is done and ready. Our burhani raita is done and ready. The third raita is a Greek style, a Zadziki inspired raita, which is nothing but a cucumber raita. For this, I'm going to grate the cucumber, add in finely chopped mint leaves, salt, and lots of crushed roasted cumin seeds. Very simple, let's see how it's done. The first step is to take, of course, a bowl full of whipped curd, and to this, I'm going to add in grated cucumber. To this, I'm going to add in finely chopped mint leaves, followed by salt, and finally, roasted cumin seeds. Let's mix all this well and a Greek inspired Zadziki style raita is also done and ready. Let's transfer this as well. Some grated cucumber, mint leaves and some roasted cumin powder. My three versions of raitas are done and ready. I'm now moving on to the fourth version and that is a tadka style raita. This is flavored with beetroot. Of course, it tastes different, it looks different, and it also has the style of a tadka. Let's see how. The first ingredient, of course, is whipped curd, to which I'm adding in beetroot. Now, beetroot um, can be eaten raw, it can be eaten baked, it can be eaten uh, uh, steamed, boiled, anything is fine. I like using raw beetroot, so I'm going ahead with this. Let's create this. To this, I'm adding in our four basic ingredients, beginning with red chilli powder, a touch of salt, a touch of black salt, and finally, a touch of cumin powder, which is roasted. Let's mix all of this. The beetroot is going to leach out its nice, wonderful, rosy pink color. Oh, by the way, before I forget, you can also use pureed beetroot. That will also give it a nice, wonderful, accentuated color. Let's transfer this as well. Well, imagine making one raita and then also making five different kinds of raitas and impressing your family and friends. Just a food for thought. Let's add in a sprinkling of cumin powder. Let's add in beetroot because that's the essence and primary flavor of this raita. And finally, comes in the tadka element. Now, what is a tadka? Tadka is basically a tempering. What you need to do is take oil, vegetable oil, um, add in mustard seeds, add in cumin seeds, and also add in a little bit of asafoetida, which is also known as heme, and curry leaves. Just pan fry it or saute it for a little while and retain that. Now, you can also make this and keep it so that you don't have to keep making the tadka. Now, my family generally loves making raitas. So what we do is we make the South Indian tempering and keep it ready, always. So once the raita is ready, just add in like a tablespoon or a teaspoon to your liking and you have a tadka which is done and ready. Let's add this in.
With this, your tadka beetroot raita is done and ready. My four varieties of raitas are done and ready. The next raita is my all-time favorite. If you personally ask me about my favorite or my personal favorite, bundi raita comes out tops. It's sweet, it has a little bit of spice, it has that little dose of cumin powder. It's just my favorite. Let's see how it's made. Let's begin with whipped curd, to which I'm going to add in bundi. Now, a lot of you who are not aware about bundi, uh, especially the ones who are not Indians or are not of Indian origin or who do not stay in Indian kind of colonies, bundi is nothing but gram flour fritters. What you need to do is a perforated spoon, um, you just add in some batter in hot oil and you just give it one or two knocks. Pearls drop in hot oil and you have to skim them out and that's the crisp salted bundi. Interesting, it's India's way of, say, the original molecular gastronomy of the country, if I may put it so. Let's add in the bundi into whipped curd, to which I'm adding in pomegranate kernels, absolutely fresh, powdered sugar, a touch of red chilli powder, a touch of salt, a touch of black salt, and finally, roasted cumin seeds, powdered. Let's mix all of this well. You need to do this very carefully because you don't want to smash the bundi which has already been soaking or soaked in water. With this, my personal favourite bundi raita is also done and ready. You know, one very important or interesting thing in this raita is I always ensure that I add in the tempering to something like this because it just brings in the natural taste and flavour of all the other ingredients. But of course, that's going to happen right towards the end. Before that, a little bit of bundi. Some pomegranate kernels, a little bit of mint leaves. It's looking so nice, so colourful, very interesting. A touch of red chilli powder, a touch of cumin powder, roasted of course. And finally, my secret in this recipe, and that is the South Indian tempering, which is nothing but a mixture of mustard, cumin seeds, a touch of asafoetida, and finally curry leaves, which are all created like a tempering in oil. With this, five varieties of raitas are done and ready. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my genuine attempt at redemption. Now, I can proudly say I've shown you several varieties of biryanis along with several varieties of raitas. Bye for now.